Good morning. This is Mary Catherine at Red Robin Farm. It's a windy morning and we are working in the garden and I'm hoping the wind doesn't keep you from being able to hear my voice. I'm going to try to really keep my mouth close to the microphone so you can hear me. This is our garden. I know you've seen photos on my blog. It's um, well I don't know how big this is. When I get in there I'll ask Adam how much space this is. Uh, about a year and a half ago he fenced the entire garden in, as you see, with posts, and this is two by four welded wire here. Um, this is the fence over here in this whole section that I grew the loofahs on last summer, and that was very fun. We'll definitely do that again. We had to put a smarter fence on here, a latch, because Ned is smart enough. He was smart enough to work this latch and get in the garden, so we had to add the rope. Although if we're here, he tends not to be naughty as much as he might be. This is a manure pile we had for a while. It's still aging, I think, and we won't use that yet. Got some wind. Uh, maybe you can hear that. You can probably hear, hear the, the greenhouse billowing over there. This is a tire bed that Adam has some of his horseradish in because horseradish really tends to take over. But it looks very happy. There's also a stray onion in there, and you will see in our garden, there are stray onions everywhere. This morning, Adam is working on putting a fence around our peas. We have rabbits in our garden and have had for several years, and they um, have been eating the tops off of our beautiful new peas. So let's go down there. This bed... I turned this over yesterday, probably shouldn't have, um, should have just weeded it and hoed it, but I turned it over with a spade. But this had some miscellaneous plants in it, some peppers and an out of control tomato plant, and I'm not sure what we'll put there this year. Here you see, I've got some onions, like I said, stray onions. These ones have started to make their flower stock, and I hope that means that I'll be able to, um, after they fall over to dig them up because I'm ready to put other things in this bed. I know it looks terrible, but a lot of this that's in here is nitrogen fixing plants that Adam put in there deliberately over the winter to amend the soil. So in this section here, we have some onions still that overwintered. We live in an area where you can actually put onions in in the fall. I know that sounds crazy, but I did that because um, they were selling onion sets last fall at the farm store and I thought oh okay here are some garlics I don't know if you can see the garlic in there there and there There's Bobo. and then we come watch out Bobo now we come to this long trellis this had peas last year no this had cucumbers too I think some no the pea Bobo get out of the pea bed go on now here's, um, we've got some nice peas growing up, as you see, but some of them have been nibbled off, and I'll show you, I'll zoom in on one. See the top of that? A rabbit ate that, a rabbit ate that right off. So we have a nice long pea bed, and we don't want to lose our peas. We had a lot of peas last year, but before they eat the tops off of all these vining peas, um, Adam is putting up a nice rabbit fence on that side and it'll come around this side. I know that seems like outrageous overkill, but if you want to get your vegetables, you have to do something. All right, this second bed, I know this looks like a mess, but this entire bed is lined with this plastic or metal, just like that bed is lined over there. We just haven't um, weeded this one out yet. This is going to be a tomato bed. Um, and the tomatoes that I had on the front porch that I overwintered, I brought them out here. <laughs> I put them in the ground. And plants don't adjust well to that kind of change. And today it's windy. Look how pathetic that poor plant looks. It is not, it is not happy at all. But it may survive. There's some, still some greenery on there. We'll see what it does. I still need to start tomatoes this year. We are behind on a lot of things because it was a long, cold winter. This 
little portion at the end of this tomato bed is my onion sets that I put in last fall. And there's about 40 to 50 onions in there. And although they're falling over, I did dig one up gently and there was no bulb whatsoever. So I've got a long way to wait on those. So this end of the tomato bed will be onions for a while. Okay, so we looked at those first two, let me zoom back out here. We looked at those first two long beds. The next bed we have is kind of a short bed and I think that's because, I don't know what that's because. It's maybe this because this was a, where the greenhouse used to be, I'm not sure. And if you look at the end of that last post there, you'll see that I have two more of my overwintered tomato plants trying hard to survive. We will see what happens with them. Okay, this is this used to be a tomato bed here. Um, and now it's a hoop bed, and we have a cover for it that blew off in a storm, and we're gonna put it back on. We had a cover over this bed of greens because of insects, but so far in this weather, the insects have not been a problem. This is my one lone celery plant that I've now put in the soil, and I'm really hoping it takes off. Um, it was hard to keep inside because celery plants have very shallow root systems, undeveloped root systems, and you have to really keep them watered and kind of cool. Um, all right, so we'll walk down this bed. This is lovely spinach. Now, I just broadcast this seed. I didn't put, as you can tell, you can see the chaos. That's all spinach, but it seems, I think that's going to be a good bed of spinach. And this is, this is red Russian kale in this section. And then we have some beautiful bright lettuce. And all of this, I mean, some of it we could probably harvest now if we wanted itty bitty stuff. But um, I would say in a week we'll be eating this. And then I th if that's the red Russian kale, then I think this is the dwarf kale. And I really love kale. As a matter of fact, we've got some returning kale over right there is a little bit of kale in that bed. Maybe I'll walk over there. And the end of this bed, I ran out of seed. You know, and we're not real farmers, you understand. We call ourselves Red Robin Farm, but this is just a... This would just be country people's regular garden 50, 100 years ago. So I hate to call ourselves farmers because we don't make a living off of this. I don't know if we make anything off of this. But it's good, good labor. So here's the end of this bed. Adam dug this out, never got it lined last year. This was the end of the lining and we ran out. You see a random onion growing up there. Let's see if I can zoom in on that onion. See, there, there's an onion. We have big old batches. Look at the sorrel. Sorrel is actually edible. I imagine it's rather bitter. I mean, this is only, what is this? Not Easter. This is end of March. And you can see just the verge. There's lots of purslane growing up. Anyway. There's a nice little bit of kale over there. And there's another volunteer kale. Um, where'd it go? <laughs> I'm still learning this camera. At the foot of that post down there, there's a little bit of kale. Okay, so let's go back and look at our greenhouse. There's not a lot going on in the greenhouse yet. The first year we were here, I was so enthusiastic that I started stuff in the greenhouse way too early. We had to run an electric heater out there to keep it warm because I, start, I think I started my seeds in February. It was just ridiculous. The dogs are making noise, playing over there. Oh. I'm sorry, I think I walked you around with the, with the focus way out. Okay, so here is the greenhouse. Let me back up just a hair so you can see. And as I said on my blog, Adam put rollers on it this year so we can roll the sides up from the bottom and um, and keep it cooler because we live in eastern North Carolina and it is hot. This is the new door he made but we, don't, we haven't put plastic on it yet. We've been very busy with church stuff as you can imagine this week because it is Holy Week. It's Easter. Um, so here's my greenhouse and usually I have these shelves all the way to the end, but we took out a few sections to put them on the front porch over the winter. Got a little bit of store-bought starter so that when I do start seeds and things come up, I don't have to wonder 
what it is that's come up. When I use Adam's compost as my seed starter, so many seeds that's in, that are in the compost from here on the farm will also pop up. And if I'm doing tomatoes, you cannot tell one tomato from another when, when it's just the seed leaves and even the early leaves. This is a new little batch of basil. And you can see some of them are coming up. And I am very excited. I really love basil. We want to use basil as greenery for our salads. And there's yet another one. I think I probably have maybe 10 basil plants in there coming up. Now this tray here, these are Matt's Wild Cherry Tomatoes. These are seeds that I saved from last year. And none of them have come up yet, but they haven't been in there that long. And I'll be interested to see if I get any. Adam is going to town today to the hospital to visit somebody. And um, he's going to stop and pick up some Juliet seeds. Those did very well for us before. A nice sturdy um, tomato. We like to use our tomatoes not just to eat on salads and things, but also to make lots of sauce and tomato paste. And um, Juliet's are really good for that, although they're not an heirloom. But boy, they come back like an heirloom. Okay, so I'm going to have more shelving here. He's going to finish this window and put on the automatic window opener that it automatically opens um, depending on the temperature in here. And so that's that works nicely. But you can also operate it manually. This is the wheelbarrow full of some of Adam's sifted compost, which I can also use to repot things. Once I get them started and I know what they are, then I'll use his stuff to pot them into bigger pots um, or whatever I need it for. This is some shelving that was on the farm and it's come in really handy for bigger plants and pots and things like that. Um, I've got a lot, I've got so much extraneous potting stuff. This is only a fraction of all I have. A lot of it's in the barn. And this is also a place that Adam weed eats during the year. Okay. There's a barrel. These are some sticks from last year. We still have a lot of cleanup to do out here. Adam has to bring me water. This is my water bucket for now. But during the summer, he brings me bucket after bucket because we have, we have no water here out in the, in the garden. And it is, as you see, there's the house. That's the nearest place we have water. 